G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Over the last couple of weeks, War Thunder has received a lot of criticism for its long-standing issues, and its so-called failure to address these issues, spurring on a fair amount of negativity in the community in general. Personally, I am not somebody who enjoys negativity, although I do post a lot of content that may seem that way. It's mostly done with the attitude of uh, a sort of a constructive criticism, if you will. It's not just ragging on Gaijin for the sake of it, more like there's sort of something that I see that isn't quite right and something that I would like to change and almost always I suggest a change. That's the way I operate and for me just ragging on about the game doesn't really do a whole lot. However, today what we're going to be doing is uh, taking some positive things. I'm Personally, I've had enough of all this sort of negativity. There's enough of it going on in the world at the moment, and of course, those of you that are in Sydney, you will know that we're in lockdown at the moment because we've had another bit of an outbreak. So our government has decided to lock down bits of the city. There's nothing going on, and everyone is just getting a bit of uh, cabin fever once again. But although it doesn't really seem to be applying to the rest of the world who seem to be sort of going out, um, I'm pretty much fed up with all the negativity. So we're not going to be doing some negative stuff today. We're going to be having a chat about the Tiger Cat and how bloody awesome this thing is. The Tiger Cat is one of those planes that just gets overlooked and as a result, a lot of people don't really play it. But when you take a little bit of time to play this thing, get a couple of upgrades, it becomes absolutely wonderful. The Tiger Cat is one of those planes that is just exceeding of, of just just so many things. It just does so damn well. It has so many guns. It's got four 20mm cannons and four 50 caliber machine guns, giving you a shit ton of ammunition to absolutely blast the crap out of anyone that might get in your way. You can even go after bombers in this thing because it is just so damn powerful. It's got just so many damn teeth. And this plane can also climb, which makes it ideal for bomber hunting. So, what I'm going to be doing is basically taking this thing for a little bit of a climb and maybe we're going to play some spot the dot looking for a couple of bombers that might present themselves as juicy targets. Now we're up against the Brits, the other Americans and the Japanese here going for a little bit of a uh, civil war if you will but that's okay, we'll take it as it comes. The Tiger Cat for me was one of those planes that I really hated until I started getting a couple of upgrades. It's just one of those things that you have to do to these sort of higher tier planes. Once you get those upgrades, once you start unlocking the little things like your engine injection, the guns, uh, the engines, the compressor, those types of sort of upgrades. I actually can't remember if this thing has a compressor upgrade, but, but basically like the lower tier upgrades, all the performance stuff, it becomes a bit of a beast. And a lot of people just don't seem to have the patience to go through that little bit of a grind, especially at tier 4. It's not terribly bad, it's especially if you don't have if, if you've got premium time it's uh, practically a breeze you can do this in maybe five or six matches uh, without many issues but overall the tiger cat does possess a couple of interesting features that makes it quite tenable at this tier it's very fast it climbs very well and it's got extremely good guns it doesn't turn particularly well but against things like jets which we will see in this match uh, you actually won't really need to worry about it too much. Jets don't really turn particularly well, they tend to be quite heavy and as a result you tend to be just able to squeeze out of the way of some of the earlier jets that are a little bit on the heavy side. So what are we doing here? Like I said earlier we're going to be hunting for bombers and at this point I think I've spotted a dot. Now this dot will turn out to be a B-29 and B-29s are particularly ferocious in the 50 cal department. They are bristling with many many 50 cals. Maybe I should make a video on this thing. It's um, it's not fun, but it certainly has its moments. Uh, it never used to be popular because it used to have a sky-high repair cost, and uh, it turns out that uh, it's just not that great. It's been put in a spot where it's uh, not very fun, but the B-29 is what the B-29 is, and uh, the Tiger Cat, on the other hand, is really, really enjoyable. So, there we go. We have our B-29 friend here at 6.5 kilometers. I'm just looking around to make sure that I'm not going to get spotted by anything else and as a result uh, sort of dogpiled. You don't want to be dogpiled in this thing because it is a plane for the offensive. If you can be on the offensive in this plane at all times then you're going to have a wonderful time but as soon as you get on the defensive you're just going to lose too much energy. So climbing high, getting above your opponents is very vital in this thing and that's kind of what I'm going to do here with this B-29. Um, there aren't too many weak spots on the B-29 so I'm just going to try and come in at the best angle that I think and I managed to set his engine on fire. I won't get the kill for this eventually, he will put out that fire, but I'm going to continue on because I 
will probably have bigger targets to fry and as you see with this match progressing I will absolutely have some bigger targets to fry and uh, plenty of them as we speak. So I'm going to keep climbing a little bit. You can see that my speed is more than enough to sort of engage in some good combat and the Tar 152 in the distance there has decided to go after the B29. Uh, he's going to get shot down by it because Tar 152. I, I don't know what it is. Tar 152s are just not durable against bombers. It's, it's one of those things you'd, you'd expect them to be a bomber hunter, but they really aren't. The Tiger Cat, on the other hand, with those four 20mm cannons, absolutely is. Oh, and did I mention that with the absolute array of guns that you have, you can go ground pounding. If you really wanted to, maybe one of these lovely B-29 enjoyers, or actually no, they're more like fanboys to be honest. One of these B-29 fanboys has uh, gone into space and decided to be an arsehole. Well, you can just mow pillboxes all day long because you just have the armament to do so. So, speaking of armament, we have to take this armament and use it somewhere that it's going to be productive. And there is a big furball down at the uh, little coastline there, and I don't really see many more enemies up at higher altitudes, meaning that this is our next best path of attack. I can see there a Spitfire in the uh, sort of right-hand side of screen, and he looks like a pretty juicy target, but the F2G also looks like a fairly juicy target, simply because he is turning around away from me and going to give me a fairly good path to uh, engage. Now, the F2G has just gone down at the last minute, so I'm going to prepare for that, spray a little bit and get a nice pilot snipe, which is very lovely indeed. I see an AD-4 coming in and a Spitfire. I'm not going to bother engaging the Spitfire. I will squeeze a quick head off onto the AD-4 and then go straight into the vertical because I have so much speed built up. I might as well convert that into altitude and with an AD-4 trailing me, I might as well try and rope it up this AD-4. The B-29 you can see in the distance there, he's coming back, but I think he's just going to either crash and give no one the kill or something dumb's going to happen because, well, it is War Thunder. We do love this game for all of its... Uh, fun stuff and one of these fun things is a rope it up have a look at where i have this ad4 that that is just the sexiest kill that you could ever get in war thunder forget clean ass reversals rope it dopes are ooh, by far the single best kills that you can get in the game they are the most satisfying and you can just see even though it's an ad4 i just managed to get him exactly where i want him and as he fell i managed to beat the shit out of him with my multitude of guns now speaking of multitude of guns this Spitfire here, a Mark 24, I believe, is going to meet the wrath of those guns. And just as I say that, there is another Spitfire coming in who is going to also meet the wrath there. He's facing off against the F8F, and he's also baited himself very nicely there. The Tar 152 goes in, completely misses, and this is my chance to strike with a quick little burst, and that is an easy as four kills. If you can be on the offensive in this plane, you have so much free reign of your opponents. It is absolutely ridiculous. This plane retains energy extremely well, as you can see, and of course, it's just such a walk in the park to get some crazy kills. All you need is an enemy that is not going to climb above you. If you do have an enemy that climbs above you, well, what you simply do is just climb harder and go for head-ons, keeping your speed at the same time, and remembering, of course, that Full, ask, uh, full commit head-ons are small PP energy, so you need to be pulling off at about 1.5 or 2 kilometers, and that is when you will get your absolute cash money. So, we have a Kika that is over there by the Tar 152. That is, I believe, uh, it might be the Tar 152 that engaged the B-29, I can't quite remember. At the end of the day, it's a brother in need, and the Kika here has decided that he's better off finding someone else to shoot at, because AFL AA is not something you want to be dealing with. So this Kika here, I'm just going to push into a vertical for him and try and land some hits. I have plenty of ammunition and plenty of firepower. So this Kika, if I can nail him in the vertical, maybe that is the money, but I can start to see that he's trying to pull a rope dope on me and therefore I need to get the hell out of there, trying to get a little bit of speed, but at the same time, trying to play chicken with this guy to see if I can use him to bait myself down and bait him into turning with me which is where I'm going to shine now what I'm doing here is I'm going to cut into him and underneath his turn so he has to full commit to a full vertical dive in order to get me I'm going to cut across take some fire from a friendly and then try and go for the sort of reversal this thing is not terribly good in reversals it is a little bit on the chonker side but at the same time it's a heavy fighter and you don't really expect to be doing reversals that being said kickers are uh, you know you can do that. You can do that with Kikas. So, what are we going to do here? 
there's not a whole lot that you can do. You basically have to wait for the kicker to make a mistake or try and climb in after him. So I'm going to keep my sort of speed a little bit, maybe see if I can bait him down, wait for him to strike again, and then go into a very, very slight climb. Again, what I want to do is try and follow him. If I don't have the engine power, maybe I can at least outclimb him, and that's kind of what I want to achieve. I just want to be able to sort of get into a position where I can threaten the kicker and make him sort of panic a little bit, where I can therefore make a move after him. Now, I've decided to climb a little bit more and see if I can get this kicker to maybe follow a teammate, and he has, but he's now decided to follow in onto me. And what I'm going to do is try the same thing here. I'm going to pull a sharp turn, and then I'm going to go down a little bit, which is going to try and make that kicker either cut into the turn, I'm going to cut away, and then up, try and make this guy panic. And that's exactly what I've done here. I have basically made him shit the bed. He's not in a good way and he is going to try and get the hell away from me. I think he makes a mistake here where he's hit something or broken a flap. There he goes, breaking the flap and landing in the drink. Oh dear. <laughs> oh man, he, he could have won. He could have gotten away. But uh, he had to extend his flaps and land up in the... Uh, I don't really know what uh, golf this is. In, in some Spanish golf somewhere. Unlucky Kika. So, our next victim here is the F80. Now, the F80 actually does turn quite well, but it's kind of on par with you. So, you can do a lot of things, especially if you wind up with an energy fight. Now, I'm trying to do the same thing here with the F80A. Try and get him into a little bit of a rope-a-dope uh, situation where I'm the sort of dope. But at the same time, I'm going to try and bait him in rather than be the victim, sort of calling my shot a little bit early, making the F-80 redive and pulling the same tactic that I did there, trying to stay out of his guns. You can see that he's just trying to follow, so I'm going to go into the vertical. He almost rams me there, and then he's overcooked his turn, gone for the vertical, realized that he doesn't have any energy left, and boom, there he goes. How fucking easy was that? This plane is a monster in the right hands, and honestly, it is the sort of sleeping giant that we never really thought would ever wake up. But I tell you what, man, this plane is a bloody beast and everyone should get their hands on it. It's uh, a rank four, so it's not easy as such to unlock for a new player, but certainly for those of you with a bit of premium time and a bit of experience, this thing should be a piece of cake to try out. The Tiger Cat is one damn fabulous plane and, oh man, it just, it just makes me want to get like an RC model of this thing. There is one that's like... I think it's 900 Australian dollars, so it's exorbitantly expensive, but my god, I would just I just want to have it now because this plane, I've played it in War Thunder and I just love it now. It's it's one of my one of my favorites. Now, this plane is also fairly lucrative in terms of the Silver Lions, so play some games, earn some SL and uh enjoy the plane. Well, I was going to do an outro with a face cam, but unfortunately the GoPro is starting to run out of batteries and I'm still waiting on the charging cable to arrive. I have got a really nice little video set up here ready to go, but uh, today it's just not working. I'm still ironing out some kinks and you might actually have, when I get this thing sorted out, a face cam web stream, uh, live stream. Only fans soon? I'm not really sure. No, obviously not. But um, anyway, jokes aside, you guys have basically helped me get that with all the sponsorship money and the air model stuff. So supporting the channel that way has been an absolute blessing. I'd also like to thank you guys for sticking around while the views have been a little bit low. A lot of people aren't watching War Thunder content anymore, and whilst that's understandable, it is still quite upsetting to me because I do put a lot of effort into getting footage for these videos and then talking over them, editing it down, and then putting up a nice thumbnail and all that sort of stuff. So whilst I can't give you guys a nice sort of image of my face, uh, well, you can sort of just have my voice and have my gratitude. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for that. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your time. Take care. And I'll catch you next time.